and turn out the lights and get into bed before the room goes dark. Well, Andrew Slack's not far behind him. He's been able to rush down to Lang Park during the commercial break. On a more serious note, these two teams last met back in 1979 and Britain won a torrid encounter by 10 points to 7 and lining up for Brisbane was Ross Strudwick. Of course, he's involved again tonight. He is the coach of Combined Brisbane. As they make their way out onto Lang Park, they'll be looking forward to giving Strudwick a uh, winning farewell. He's off to Halifax to take up a coaching appointment in the English division. The fullback, Steve Hegarty. The wingers are Kelly Egan and Gordon Barwick. The centres are Brett McCarthy and Steve Cherry. The 5'8", Peter Coyne. Halfback, Brett Daunt. Lock forward, Darren Smith. Ian Staines and Hagarth are the second rowers. The props are Ponting and McIntyre. And the hooker, Bill Holmes. Great Britain make their way out onto Lang Park. They're coached, of course, by Malcolm Reilly. They'll be looking forward to a win tonight. Here's how they line up. Phil Ford, Henderson Gill, Carl Gibson, Gary Schofield, David Stevenson are the centres. The 5'8", Hilary Hanley, halfback Mike Ford, Paul Dixon is the lock forward. The second rowers are Fairbank and Powell. The props are Crooks and Case, and the hooker is Paul Groves. Our commentators as usual, Alan Thomas, Mick Vivers, and the very slick Andrew Slack. The referee is Mr David Manson. Let's go straight to the kickoff. And the two Davids in centre screen, referee David Manson and the Great Britain centre David Stevenson kicks off this representative match in Brisbane. Straight into it, straight into the 22 with Ian Staines. And that's a nice progressive start from uh, Brisbane right from the first tackle, Mick Beavers. Oh, that was a very good attacking run. And, uh, Mike Ford felt the whole lot of that. Staines again, just outside the 22. Well, what about a tip for the match, Farmer? I think uh, Great Britain will get away with this one. Comfortably? I think so. I hope not. I hope these young fellas go very well. It's the first time we've seen Brisbane, remember, without the so-called stars, or the stars, because they were stars. So they'll have to think for themselves, and we'll see if they can come up. Andrew Slack, Great Britain got a bit to prove tonight. They've lost their last three on the trot, including the test. Very much so. But I think Alan Saturday's performance in the test will have really boosted their confidence. And tonight we should see a really fired up Great Britain team. Brisbane, on the other hand, they've got a lot to prove. They're young guys here who haven't had the chance this year in the wake of uh, Broncos and other things. So Ross Strudwick really stressed to them to make the most of their opportunity. But I think a lot depends on the back row. Darren Smith, Glenn Haggath and Ian Staines. If they perform, well, I think Brisbane could be in for a shot. But you'd have to think that Great Britain to win. All right. I'm going for an upset. Groves to distribute. Now Hanley. Schofield. That's come off a Brisbane player. And that's play on. Ford. Mike Ford. Someone pick it up. Toe. And that should be a try. Not one of the prettiest ones you'll see. Gary Schofield will score. Great Britain in. They lead four points to nil. And that try started from their own 22. Well... There's no doubt about it, they've got the speed. And as you see, they just ran it after this. Oh, no doubt about it. Well, Plenty of ran into space. Oh, yes, but then... And this is the decision off the... Yeah, well, that's, off that's a top decision. It was quite correct. In actual fact, the Brisbane player tried to hold him. Here it is. <laughs> Brett Dawn trying to hold him back. And he got confused. He ended up with two Great Britain players there. But you see, once they, uh, as you'll watch here, Hanley, once they hit the open, look, he's not even uh, running all over the place. The Schofield, no fool this lad. And there's Dort. He followed it right through, Dort, Brett Dort. A bounce of the ball just favouring Great Britain because Great Britain, uh, Ford got in front of Dort. Ford a nil. Try against the run of play. And he's just push that one a little bit wide. So four points to nil. Great Britain lead Brisbane. Eight minutes gone in the first half. Mark McIntyre. Good run from the young lad McIntyre. Now through Holmes and Dawn's holding it up for Haggard. Still trying to get the hands free. Or it's taken by Kelly Egan. Coming back in field Egan. And he'll be tackled by Powell. Now Holmes giving it to Dawn. No one there for Daunt. Daunt has to take it on his own. Groves and Crooks will put him down. Coyne left him posted. That's a mortal sin in this type of football. Staines, only five metres out. Last tackle coming up. Daunt on his own. Lot linking over the top. McCarthy, try, try. Yes, Brett McCarthy. Clever play from Brett Daunt. 
and Brisbane in the score and it's four points apiece. Well, I think either of the centres could have scored this. They were pointing to each other and it, that was lovely play. It was, I don't know whether it was touched by a Brisbane player or a Great Britain player. We'll have a look here now. Dawn picks it up, dummies, dummies. He was going to give it to Kelly, uh, to Coyne, but didn't make it. Carver says, thank you very much. He will see whether it's chapped. It's a bit of might have gone backwards. He was touched by a great Britain player. So it was OK, okay. play on. And Brett McCarthy in to score, so it's four points apiece. So Brisbane have done the right thing, Andrew Slack. They've hit back quickly. Yes, yeah, certainly have. And again, the, the class of Daunt shows. He really is a super player and took the right option earlier in that move. He had nobody, so rather than throw the, the silly pass, he took it up and allowed the play to develop, which subsequently it did. He found the gap and his, his great strength, or one of his great strengths, his passing, enabled the try to be scored. A good little player, Daunt, there's no doubt. So now Hegarty to try and add the extras. We'll get a good view from our commentary position. And... He's missed that too. Well, none out of two. Four points all the score, and there's 13 minutes gone in the first half. Oh, well, I, he's not feeling too well. Gary Schofield but... leaving the field. Now Groves. Now it's gone to Crooks, and Hanley looking to set things up, and he goes on a dummy. He found space. He's a fire looming beside him. This will test Hegarty. Oh, he's got blinding speed, a fire. Hegarty was only five metres from him. He might as well be in for Bulcher. He had no hope. A fire under the post. And Great Britain lead by eight points to four. Well, it seems that Elry Hanley is the man causing uh, Brisbane all the trouble. That's where the breaks are coming. Here it is, the big dummy. And not a bad fend off either. Away he goes, and there's two supports coming. There's a fire. Now, I felt, really, I felt for Steve Haggerty there. As you said, Kabulcha, he may as well have been in Toowoomba. Well, that was a great piece of work from Hanley. And the cover, just not good enough. But he set a fire up beautifully. He actually had two options, didn't he? Easy could have went for Carl. Actually, it would have been easy for him to go to Gibson, probably on the inside. But a fire with a lot of speed, only on the park for about, what, two minutes and he scored. The try has just been converted, and Great Britain now lead by 10 points to four. Now, here's Gibson coming on Hanley's inside, but he decided to go outside, and Hegarty had no possible... A fire just went with tremendous acceleration. Throws the arms out a bit wide, but he runs the big fellow, and a little bit of a cushion under the post. 10 points to four, the lead for Great Britain, and there's 15 and a half minutes to go in the first half. That's Paul Groves. Now it's with Crooks. Dixon. I noticed Lee Crooks tonight, Mick, not as vigorous as he was against Manly a couple of weeks ago. No, he's uh, playing himself, I think, for a test spot. Gill. Henderson Gill. Daunt couldn't hold him. Fairbank. Fairbank. Carl Fairbank all the way. Great Britain in again. They lead now by 14 points to four. Well, it's, once they start to move, they're most known. Now, we see Brett Dorney try, try to get a, a, a hold of him, but no chance. And the support plays coming very well for uh, Great Britain. I must admit that uh, Fairbank Seem to have plenty of speed. We'll see here, where's Brett Daunt? Here he is. What a formidable task. <laughs> Henderson Gill just too strong. Fairbank backing up. Hegarty tripping over. Coin coming too late. And I think he was coasting at the finish, Fairbank. I think he had a little bit of petrol in the tank. So Carl Fairbank in to score. And Great Britain now lead by 14 points to four with the kick to come. And the kicker is David Stevenson, the centre. Been able to score tries, Mick. Um, I might just wait for this kick first. And that's away. So Great Britain lead by 14 points to four. Eight minutes to go before the break. Outside their own 22 by a fraction, Great Britain. Back to Phil Ford. 
He's missed by Coyne. He's missed by Holmes. He's missed by Egan. Here's trouble. Oh, nice hands of fire. Here he goes. Martin the fire underneath the post. And it was the defensive work that was lacking from Brisbane. They missed vital tackles, and once again, Great Britain have run from their own 22. 18 points to four, and a fire a very, very happy man. Well, this is, he had a two options, kick it or run. So Phil Ford said, I'll have a little bit of a run. And run he did, and some, watch this, juggle. Ju he, he took that from basically behind his back, and away he goes. <laughs> Kelly Egan giving chase. But now watch this. When he puts the ball down, now watch him. Da, 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 da. <laughs> well, Ford had created all the good work and great hands from oh, uh, Martin Abaya. And he just had too much speed. He's a contortionist. The try's been converted in the meantime and down he goes in the hands. Zippity do da, zippity a. Yes. 20 points to four is the lead for Great Britain over Brisbane. And there's six minutes to go before half time. underway Steve Hegarty puts his boot to the ball 20 points to four Great Britain lead at the break let's go to Andrew Slack and find out what happened in the dressing rooms in both camps well if uh, Malcolm Reilly's halftime talk was any indication there's no way that Great Britain will be going into their shell in the second half he, he really got on their case and and mainly was concerned about the lack of concentration he believed they dropped the ball too far too many times in that first half he wants them to improve on that area Ross Strudwick for Brisbane naturally enough concerned about that defense in the last last 15 minutes that's the first thing that needs to be addressed by his players and then to get some composure in their attack when the defense went downhill so did their attack which had looked good in that first 20 minutes or so Brisbane any chance of coming back and making a, a go of this match farmer well, I do hope so, but uh, they'd have to tighten up. I was about to ask Andrew, as he was eavesdropping with his uh, glass to his ear and on the wall, uh, was Malcolm really up an octave, or is he just talking to them normally? Because I know he can go up a couple of octaves, Andrew. Oh, he was, he was very high, Muddy. He was tenor capacity, you might say, but uh, a lot of it, as I said earlier on, I can't understand. Is, uh, the brogue's a bit tough for me, but it was very loud. I'd say there's a bit of paint off those walls. Danes goes to dummy half. The Great Britain backs getting up very, very quickly as McCarthy gives a short pass to Langer. Inside to Egan. Kevin Langer just on the field trying to create a gap for Kelly Egan. McCarthy goes to dummy half a coin. That was forward. And what's the ruling? It's touched. Play on. Six to go. Coin. Away to Langer. It's Kevin Langer to Haggard. Possibly not the right man to be running there. Now McIntyre. Mark McIntyre, only about five metres out from the line. Staines full bore, two metres out. Great Britain hanging on. Daunt, nowhere to go, tackled a metre out. They're shallow out wide on this side. Great Britain, but it goes to Haggath and they're trying to bury the way up the middle with nowhere to go, and that was a sixth tackle. And, and that was a waste of time. They didn't move the ball. No one called it out or set play. And oh, here's trouble. Here's a fire. Martin a fire. He's got away from Dort. Oh, he's just got in the last minute. Martin a fire tackled. But Dort just got him. Just as well because it was shut the gate with support looming. And Great Britain again running it from well inside their own territory. They ran it nearly from their own line. What's happening out wide there, Andrew? Well, there's going to be major problems now, I think, Alan, because Kevin Langer, for all his courage and his great play as a halfback, I would think he'd be the first to admit he's not a wing, which is exactly where he's playing, and he's marking Martin Afire, who must be one of the speediest players around. Barwick's gone back to fullback, so we've got a halfback on one wing, and we've got a, a centre three-quarter on the other. Here's Hanley. Ball going loose. That'll be Brisbane's possession. Fairbank. Still going. So, Great Britain are inside the 22. And they've run the ball in about two tackles, the best part of about 70 metres, so they're doing it well. And Brisbane are going to be pinked for up inside the five. And I think he saved Brisbane from a fate worse than death on that occasion. Oh, they were lined out deep. 
the Great Britain backs and they were ready to roll. David Stevenson. 50% tonight so far and he shouldn't make any mistakes with us and he doesn't and Great Britain now lead by 22 points to four they can't beat them with speed and I think the Great Britain side have got a bit more ability out there than them. Well, it's sad to say that, but this will only do these kids a heap of good. Get a bit of confidence. I know what they have to do to be, top, Gill. to be top class footballers. So Great Britain are outside the Brisbane 22 now. Groves and a wraparound from Hanley. And that goes to Gibson. And he'll be tossed into the ground by Kelly Egan. A fire from Dummy Hart. Now it's back to Groves, to Crooks, and Powell running straight and running hard. Almost at the quarter. Well, Brisbane a little bit slow to get off the Great Britain player, Case. Oh, Brit Brisbane went inside the five metres then. I'm not here. Well, there's one player offside out here. Darren Smith by about three metres. So Hanley will run it up the middle. Elry Hanley. Hanley, if he gets the pass to 40, he'll score. They keep it alive. Mike Ford in the score. And Brisbane just can't regret. They can't put the player on the ground. And Hanley was able to stand in the tackle from Phil Ford to Mike Ford. And now it's 26 points to four. Well, on the replay here, you, you can see the sheer power of the, the man. Look. They can't get him on the ground. They still didn't get him down. He ends up flipping one out. Bit of a juggle there. And that's the easiest try you've ever... Ooh, that was the easiest try you'll ever see by Jay. He nearly bounced that one too. Well, let's have a look and see if he did. Uh, he didn't, but it, it's, look at that. <laughs> He's given it two hits. Oh, a juggle. bit of a juggle. Now watch, there's the big gap. Straight past David Manson now. Ooh. The head on. <laughs> The head on might show whether he is, no, is David Steve. No time for it. But Adds the extras. 28 20. points to four. Great Britain lead in the 17 minutes to go. Great Britain, so back for the restart. David Stevenson, the man on screen. The centre for Great Britain. He's 29 years of age, Stevenson. Made his test debut against the Kangaroos in 1982. That was at Wigan. He played in the second test. So he's been around for a while. There he is. Big fella. Now they've got the numbers out wide. If they move it quickly here, Brisbane are a little bit short. Oh, Ford stepped. Now the backups come. He's got to try and score in his own. He's, he's muffed us everywhere he's gone. And then he threw a shocker. Well, he had no, no chance of looking. He made the break. He wanted to run a solo try. He had blokes looming up everywhere and never had Bo Peep left, right or centre. Have a look at this. Here's the replay. He got out of some very pitiful defence. Here's another attempt. And we, Brisbane, and I say we end up with the ball. Well, that was a try butchered by Great Britain. He had players oh. all around him, support. Wanted to be a hero. And not only did he end up a hero, I reckon he would have lost the girl in the end as well for that. Absolutely butchered. That try. So Brisbane. With Coyne and Barwick. Clever play from Coyne. He's watching Great Britain. By golly, they had some fellas coming in cover just the same, Mick. Yes, they're very speedy and they're, they're playing pretty well. That's a good-looking kick. You've seen a number of Great Britain teams over the years. You've seen the first test. You've seen this side tonight. I know you can't compare us, but what do you think of them? Well, they're, uh, they're showing us what the Great Britain sides of old can do. Uh, given a bit of room to move and with a bit of speed. Uh, I think we've got a change coming up in the meantime. We'll go to Andrew. Yes, well, number 15 for Great Britain, Hugh Waddell, is coming onto the field, as is Chris White from South for Brisbane. Uh, as of this moment, not sure who White will be replacing, but... Um, 
But the Great Britain replacement has gone in instead of the front row of Brian Case. I'd say it could be Mark McIntyre, but I could be wrong. Here's trouble. Well, that was sloppy play from Great Britain. They tried to run it from their own line. And David Stevenson well, dropping Well, here's the it. replay. He was taking things far too cheaply. They're not afraid to tell each other what's going on behind the post there. They really ripped into <laughs> ripped into him about that. Well, Darren Smith is off and Chris White is on. So White replacing the lock forward and Darren Smith. So 28 points to four. Do you think the side, this Great Britain side, can win the, the next test against Australia or do you think they gave it their best shot? No, I don't think they, they've still got plenty in them. Plenty of steam there. And uh, these games are conditioning these key players. That's why Crooks is running around out here. And I'd say in the first test, if they'd made a few changes at the right time and had the player like Crooks to run him on 20 minutes near the end, he would have been the unsettler again for the Australian side. They had Australia unsettled, then they allowed them to get back in the match. And if they had a fellow like Crooks who come on and had them looking and look out, here he comes again, uh, it could have been... Uh, could have been really curtains for Australia in that first test. And I know the Southern Press are saying we change this bloke and we change that bloke. I don't care who you put in there. The Poms gave us plenty in that first test, and particularly in the first three quarters of the game. So there's Ford losing the ball in the tackle. Lang has come up with it. He's going to be penalised. Stealing the ball. Penalties favouring Brisbane 11 to 3. Ford finds touch midway between the 22 and quarter inside Brisbane territory. 13 minutes to go, 28 to 4 is the lead for Great Britain. As Paul Groves comes up to take the tap. And there's a bit of switch of play and a wrap around and away they go. I don't think the blind. Andrew Slack, I don't think the blind was quite wide enough to be working a move like that, was it? No, there's only a couple of metres, but uh, they didn't bank. need the blind, they're up the middle. Fairbank going across, Daunt will get him, and over comes Cherry. Carl Fairbank, 10 metres out. Henderson Gill from dummy half. Five metres out now, Great Britain. Groves, who's orchestrated things pretty well, running across, Hanley holding it up for Powell. Powell's ducked into the ground. And a good tackle from Mark McIntyre. Now Waddell. They keep it alive with Powell. Heading straight for the line. Hand, that's gone loose. A fire couldn't hang on to it. And Barwick will play it for Brisbane right on the chalk. Well, this is the sort of play that I'm sure uh, the uh, coach of Great Britain wouldn't like to, uh, Malcolm really, wouldn't like to be seen happening. The sloppy players. We see a penalty here for, good Lord, all sorts of a mess. But uh, this sort of loose drop the ball play from Great Britain, it's crept, it crept in in the second half of the test, and it's here again tonight. And uh, I feel, Andrew, it's like that it, it's a sort of a, a, they get a little bit, uh, what, trying to fix things up too quickly? Well, I, I wonder if at this stage of this game, complacency might enter into it. I think in the test match, conditioning uh, was a key factor. I, I believe come the second and third tests, that won't be as much a factor as you mentioned earlier on. They will be fitted. I'll be more used to the conditions, and I think we'll see less of it. But the, the fellow guilty of that last uh, infringement, Roy Powell, I think he's had a great game all round, and, and he and, and perhaps uh, Lee Crooks will really be pressing for, for test selection come the second test. Well, you think by now that both teams would know that you can't reef the ball out. I don't know how many penalties that David Manson's given for that infringement tonight. You think you just give it away and let the bloke get up and play the ball. In fact, it's it spoilt the game to a degree. But Brisbane have the ball. Outside the 22, 10 and a half minutes remaining. Great Britain lead 28 to 4. Is Australia. Channel 9 probably brings the cover and Daunt goes to ground. Carl Fairbanks and Henderson Gilworth attacks. Chris White. 
32 metres out from the line. Holmes, cross to Haggath. Haggath, good strong run, Haggath. Only about 30 metres out from the line. Can no, Brisbane get over? No one near him to support. Dawn, wide, coin, and they've got a bit of room. Egan, he should go all the way. He's big enough, he's strong enough, and he does. Kelly Egan in to score. Brings this crowd at Lane Park. Gives them something to cheer about. Great Britain League, 28 to 8. Well, it's certainly about time. And White moved it on beautifully, the ball. Coyne, and then Egan. And he meant business. Could have got a bit further, probably. Maybe I'm wrong. No, he had... Oh, he was on the way down when he scored it. But uh, this is good to see, Brisbane finishing on and giving their backs a bit of a go. And I must say this, the, the Brisbane backs haven't had an opportunity much all night. There's Kelly Egan, 19, student. It's created a big impression since he's come down from Cairns playing with the diehards. Didn't seem to mind that I gave him a bit of a pay the other day for climbing all over blokes and twitching and kicking on the ground. And he hasn't done it tonight, and that's good to see. No goal from Peter Coyne. Great Britain lead 28 points to eight, and there's six minutes remaining. So Great Britain will bring the ball back to the halfway. Just done what they had to do tonight. Mick, haven't they, really? That's true. Uh, they haven't looked extended. And even when they were scoring tries, the Great Britain backs, they just... Uh, of fire and these fellas they looked as though they were just idling but then again there's always when you try and open the throttle at times it doesn't uh, doesn't work this kid's going to be a good footballer this white he certainly made a difference when he's come on but then again mick it is easy to run on strongly at the end of a game isn't oh, it and running on at the, at the head of it but he is having a look and uh, on that occasion he didn't but he is having a look for supports and moving the ball and by that i'm not detracting from his performance I think the best example of it was uh, was Terry Lamb in the first interstate game. He came on with 10 minutes to go and looked a world beater. He came out here the other night and was just like the rest of them. That's touched. So Cherry should be able to dive on it if he can, but he can't, so it rolls into touch. Of course, the State of Origin, the third match coming up on Tuesday night from the Sydney Sports Stadium. And Andrew Slack McVeavers and myself will be in Sydney to bring you that match live at 7.30. Can Queensland make a clean sweep, Mick? Yes, they have to if they want to keep these guys in the test side that's picked after that. Yes, they can. They've got the side. They've got the uh, the reason to do it. They've had the Southern Press giving them a nice old rev about players not playing up to standard. It's well, just it's just a pity that you, you can't throw the ball in some of these guys who babble, throw them out there and say, have a go, because in that first test, that first half was as solid as I've seen. Two and a half minutes remaining. Brisbane in possession. Egan again. Big Kelly Egan's away. He's beaten Hanley. Pass has gone to coin. Dawn's position right. One extra. Langer. Back towards Barwick. Oh, that's a good try. Well done, Gordon Barwick. But it started from Kelly Egan. And Brisbane have finished on the right note in the dying minutes. A very, very good try. Great Britain lead by 28 points to 12. Oh, it's lovely to see them finish with a big a bit of a kick. They'll go home quite pleased with themselves. We're only seeing the last part of it here, but a good run from Kelly Egan and Daunt there. And oh, <laughs> well, it was good backup play. Well, Langer was Kevin, linking up. Well, Kevin Langer, he, he, he had to dart and weave and look for his support. Here's Egan, gets away. Back in, and then the one-handed pass. Hello, tendency from Gene Miles. There's Dawn. Here comes ba uh, Langer. Then on to Barwick. And I didn't think Barwick would make it. But that was a determined effort. I know the kick's in front, so the extras should be added in a moment. And uh, with only one minute. Oh, it's over. <laughs> it won't be the greatest kick you'll ever see at Lang Park. Uh, Peter Coyne's converted the try. 28 to 14. We'll go for a wrap-up. Firstly, to Andrew Slack. 
Well, good news for Brisbane, those late tries. They've played reasonably well, but what they've been let down by is their first up defence. A couple of the, the forwards have just missed too many tackles. It's as simple as that. The attack was going quite well early, but after those missed tackles, the attack too fell away, but it's picked itself up well. And, and the likes of Kelly Egan, Coyne, and, and Gar Gordon Barwick have played well, and the forwards thought Bill Holmes and Dean Ponting did well. And Kevin Langer, he'll never ri rival Ken Irvine on the wing, but in the situation that, he, that he's been thrown in there, I think he's done exceptionally well. Britain have played well in patches. Uh, I think they've showed quite a bit of class in the back line. Uh, disappointingly, they haven't done enough of it, but I think there's a bit there to work to, and uh, come the second test, things could get very interesting. Palmer? Well, Brisbane boys tried very hard. I was... Uh, Mark McIntyre, he'll he'll learn a lot from this. He was disappointing. He'd know that he tried hard, but it, it just wasn't up to uh, scratch. Uh, I thought probably the best was uh, Ponting and Holmes of our forwards, and Coyne, Daunt, and probably McCarthy and Cherry are the best of the backs. For Great Britain, yes, you're right, Andrew. They've got plenty to show us. They were just idling in the back line. Their forwards, they'll all, they'll all uh, gain from this, but they... They've shown us that they'll come out in the second test and maybe give us a bit of hurry up. Full-time score, Great Britain defeated Brisbane by 28 points to 14. Well, there it was, Great Britain winning by 28 points to 14. Let's have a look at the full-time statistics. And the penalties favouring Brisbane by 13 to 3. The scrums 10-9 in favour of Great Britain. They also scored five tries to three and three goals to one, giving Great Britain a scoreline that favoured them 28 points to 14. State of Origin, the third and final match on Tuesday night. Just a reminder of our coverage live from 7.30pm and that's from the Sydney Football Stadium. Can Queensland make it three out of three this year? Also, on Sunday, our cameras trek to Dolphin Oval for the Winfield Cup match between Redcliffe and Ipswich. That should be a pretty entertaining match. Hope you enjoyed our special War With Football Boots. On behalf of the team, good night.